Hi guys, my name is Crystal Bianca and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a book called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. So this book is a really popular book right now. Everybody has Bought it and I decided to jump on the bandwagon. I've got to say I was not disappointed. This book is a prequel to the original Hunger Games books and it's set in the 10th Hunger Games and it's set around earlier when things are just starting to be created. It's, it's right after the war. The Hunger Games are in its earlier stages. It hasn't really been mastered yet. They're still making up the rules and it follows the journey of... Okay, I'm gonna get this wrong. Corolonius Snow. So I'm really bad with names, so if I pronounce any of these names wrong throughout this video, I am so sorry. And in this book, this is the first time that they actually have mentors for the Hunger Games, and Coronius Cor Snow is one of the mentors. And he lives in the capital, and his family fortune was actually impacted by the war. So there was a bombing in District 13 and his family basically lost all their wealth. So he, his family is at the brink of losing their fortune, their apartment, and he is studying at university and he is one of the students that have been recruited to be one of the mentors for each of the tributes in the Hunger Games. Cronius is assigned a tribute and he is assigned the girl from District 12 and her name is Lucy Gray and in honour of her today I've worn something bright and colourful because she's got quite a bubbly and bright personality. She's a singer and she charms everyone wherever she goes and she's known for her ruffled rainbow coloured dress that her mother used to wear. If any of you have not read this book yet, I would probably leave this video now, click out of this video, find another video to click on, because there are going to be spoilers ahead. For those of you who have read this book, then let's have a little chat. This world that it's set in is quite different to the world that The Hunger Games is set in. Because the war has recently been finished between the districts and the capital, everything is kind of a mess. There's ruin everywhere, people are starving, it's just not a nice world to live in. There is a lot of pressure on Cronius Snow to actually do well in this Hunger Games to lead his tribute to victory because if he doesn't then he can lose his place in the university and he can lose his name. So a lot of his worries are about credibility and his Snow name is part of a long old line and now that they've lost his fortune, that lion is in danger. So he wants to improve his family name. He wants to, he's ambitious, so he wants to go up in the world. He even talks about being president one day. He's assigned the tribute of Lucy Gray. He is annoyed. He hates that he's given a little girl from District 12, someone who probably has no chance of winning the Hunger Games. And despite this, he still wants to make an effort. He wants to please his teachers, the dean. He wants to make an impression. So when they arrive by train carts, the, dis the tributes, he actually goes to the train station and he waits for hours for Lucy Gray to arrive. And straight away, when he introduces himself, they hit it off. And I could tell straight away that he would develop feelings for Lucy. It was so obvious, but um, it's kind of cute, their relationship at the beginning. There's something about Lucy Gray that really reminds me of Katniss, but then there's another aspect of her that's just different. So Katniss was sort of standoffish, and she was only charming because she was told you need to be charming, otherwise there would be consequences. But Lucy Gray sort of, it comes easier to her, she um, She's great at talking to people. She's a lovely singer, so she charms everyone with her voice. And she knows how to manipulate people. And she's really good at it. Like Katniss, she actually made quite an impression at the reaping. So when Katniss volunteered for her little sister, that was the first time in history that someone's actually volunteered. But 
For Lucy Gray, she, when her name was pulled out, she actually walked past the man's daughter and she put a snake down her dress. And the significance of the snake comes straight away. So throughout the book, there are references to the snakes and they're actually super important. And I actually love that the title and the book cover and everything sort of relates with the theme of the snakes. Nearly half of this book is set before the Hunger Games, and all of this stuff happens before the games actually begin. People are dying left, right, and center. It's crazy. I feel so sorry for the characters that they have to live in this sort of world. One of the mentors at the zoo actually gets killed by one of the tributes, and they hang up the tribute's body as an example, and they parade these dead bodies throughout the streets. It's just... There's people starving, there's cannibalism because people don't have any food, there's crime, it's just, it's horrible. So before the tributes even go into the games, there's a lot of chaos that's happening, there's even a bomb that's set off and it's killing people, so it's not just the tributes who are dying before the actual Hunger Games, it's actually the mentors too. So what really got to me in the book and what really stood out is that the mentors were as disposable as the tributes even though the mentor were capital children and they were growing into their role in the capital society and they were only just students they were being killed they were being hurt left right and center and that really um disturbed me a little but it also gives you a sort of sense of what their society is like and how much it's like kill or be killed. This is obvious in the scene with Dr. Ghoul, or Goal. Um, she was reviewing a proposal that was submitted by Coronius. Well, Mencia took credit for a proposal that Snow submitted, and they are both called into Dr. Goal's office, Ghoul's office, and they are asked to retrieve the proposal out of the tank that's full of all these colorful rainbow snakes. And they're both freaked out. And Snow puts his hand in first and he's okay because his scent is actually in the tank with the snakes. So he pulls out his piece of paper. But then Clementia puts in her hand and the snakes bite her hand and they, she gets infected by these snakes and she gets nearly killed and she gets sent to the hospital wing. And Snow is just there shocked like, oh my god, what the hell just happened? And it should have, sort of shows you that, like, these people, these higher-ups in the capital, they will do anything to get what they want. So if they want to find liars, if they want, they actually want, they want total and utter control. They want complete submission over everyone in the capital and the districts. So Snow not only has to focus on his tribute and to help Lucy Gray win, but he also has to try and evade all these threats from his own people and to actually stay alive. But I think that it's sort of cute the way that they develop the relationship between Lucy Gray and Snow. I think that that's one thing that really lines up his life during all of this chaos that's going everywhere. But I think, um, it's really cute how possessive he feels over Lucy Gray. So there's a scene in the start of chapter 12 that I'm going to read out to you. And it's really cute. So, and last but least, District 12 girl. She belongs to Cor Coronia Snow. Things might have been quite different if you hadn't learned your little rainbow girl. The truth is, we were all so busy killing each other that we forgot to how to have fun. She knows though, your girl. His girl, his. He and the capital, it was given that Lucy Gray belonged to him. And if she'd had no life before, her name was called out at the reaping. I think those two are actually really, really cute. There's actually another character that I really like. And his name is, oh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I think it's Saint. I don't know if it's a silent H. Sanus? Sanus? Okay, I'm just going to say Sanus. Se Seginus? Seginus? Maybe it's Seginus. <laughs> Anyway, um, he is one of the mentors in the capital, and he is new money, so his family comes from District 2, and he sort of have, has different ideals and different values to a lot of the other people in the capital. He thinks that the games are inhumane, and being a mentor doesn't really agree with him as much. He doesn't like it. He wants to fight for the rights of the tributes, 
and I, yeah, I really, really liked him from the beginning. I think that he was actually one of the really genuine characters in the book. And he actually faces a lot of pressure from his father to do well and to follow in the line, even though he's more of an activist and he doesn't really have the same beliefs as his family. So before these games start, Snow goes to find Lucy and he wants to give her a gift as his, as a symbol of his love and his affection. And he gives her his mother's compact and his mother's compact smells like roses that's why he smells like roses all the time he's always got a rose on his sleeve and it's really cute that whenever he actually gives her a rose she actually picks the petal off and she actually eats the petals i um and it's interesting to see how the roses aren't really considered creepy or anything like that how they would have been in the hunger games when we talk about snow but in this book, it's more so a symbol of like affection. And his mother used to always smell like roses. So in this scene, Snow actually confesses his feelings for her, which is really cute. And at first, I thought that she wouldn't really say anything. I felt like too, I felt like his feelings for her were really one-sided. Because we didn't really see Lucy's point of view and whether she actually felt for him. Or whether she was really using Snow to actually win these games. But then she ends up kissing him back and then... They have a really cute moment together and I I really feel sorry for them as a couple. The fact that he has to watch on while she's got all these people around her trying to kill her. But when the games actually start, it's brutal again. Um, there, you can see that there's a theme running, especially between the Hunger Games and this book, that some tributes um, team up together and they try and kill off others, whereas some tributes like they um, have each other's backs and they don't really want to kill the other and they'll just sort of wait it out and see whether others will die of natural causes or from being hunted. And Lucy Gray is one of those people who hides it out like Katniss because she knows that physically she's not as strong as the other tributes and she knows that she's probably best playing it out and that strategy actually really works for her for a time. But um there's one scene that really got me in the games when I don't know why he did it. So Sejanus, he actually goes into the arena and I don't know what the purpose of him doing it was, but he goes in and he tries to go to his tribute. I think his tribute's injured or dead. I think his tribute's called Marcus. Anyway, he goes into the arena where he can easily get killed by all these other tributes and um, Snow gets called up by Dr. Goal and, he, and he's, they're just like, you need to go get him. He's gone off doing his own thing. We don't know why he's doing it. You go in there and get him. And then Snow's trying to go to them. Um, you know, I can get killed doing that, but then like, not, not do it. And he's like, well, could I at least have a weapon? And they're like, mm, no, I don't think so. So he has to go into the arena without a weapon with all these other tributes in there with weapons and he has to try and find his the other mentor. And when he finds him, it's like, oh my god, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. But then, um, and all these tributes start coming after them and Snow actually ends up killing one of the tributes to defend himself. And it's just, that scene has just had me on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh my god, why would you do that? That's so stupid. Like, ugh. It's sort of, and that's another scene that shows you just how expendable these mentors are. So the games themselves are actually quite entertaining. I actually really enjoyed seeing Lucy Gray's gameplay and how at the end um, she had her own strategy with the snakes and stuff like that to sort of win the games. I think it was, it was predictable that she would win the games, like I knew that she would win, but it was interesting to see what would happen afterwards. Like, would her and Snow actually be a couple? And I was actually thinking too, I don't know why I was thinking this, but I was like, what if she just turns her back on him and, sees like, and says like, look, I just used you for the games and she wants nothing to do with Snow. Because so I was really doubting her feelings for him. I just felt like his feelings were stronger than hers. But then Snow ends up getting caught for cheating for trying to get her to win by putting, um, by giving her like, well he gave her the compact and the compact she used for the rat poison and then he dropped her 
handkerchief in the tank where all the snakes were before the snakes were released in the arena. So the snakes didn't attack her. It killed. They killed other tributes. So he did cheat in the games to get her to win. So they, the higher-ups found out and they ended up sending Snow to District 12. Well, he chose to go to District 12 to be a peacekeeper. And it was coming. Like, there had to be consequences for what he did. And I was just wondering what how things would go between him and Lucy Gray. And I was surprised that they actually were a couple and they actually really liked each other. And... Yeah, and I was actually really, really surprised when, um, what's his name, Sejanus? Sejanus turned up too, and he said that, you know, he doesn't like the capital, he wants to do more work, he wants to be a medic, so that's why he's come to be a peacekeeper too. And I was actually really happy for Snow that he actually had someone that, like a friend, someone that he cared about with him in District 12. Anyway, Sejanus starts banding with the rebels, and he's trying to find an escape, and he thinks of leaving with some people from District 12 and finding a better life. And Cronius doesn't like that. He um, still has this really strong dedication to the capital. He believes in everything the capital says, and his alliances are with them. So he ends up using a recorder, and he records Sejanus's confession without him knowing, and he sends that back to Dr. Goal in the districts. And when he did that, I was so annoyed. Because I'm like, why would you do that? Even the letter, he sent a letter to Dr. Goal as if she didn't just throw him under the bus in the past. And he completely threw his friend under the bus. And he's just like, oh yeah, he might be sent home. He'll go do some other stuff. He won't be my problem anymore. Instead, he gets hanged to the death for being a traitor. His hanging was so sad. I cried. I just... And when he called out for his ma, <laughs> and then all the birds started like replicating his shout and his cry of death and it was just the mocking jays the symbolism of, symbolism of the mocking jays was just so so prominent within the book and i loved how they related other aspects from the hunger games into this book they even talk about katniss and eating katniss and i just i really like that element how there's a theme without the book throughout the book and Things just go downhill from there. He turns on Lucy Gray at the end because they were going to leave. And he's like, no, I don't want that life. He was offered a position as an officer in District 2. So, so um, she's the only one who saw him commit a murder. So he needed to get rid of the evidence. He found the guns. He And he shot at Lucy Gray. We don't know what happened to Lucy Gray. I'm actually really curious what happened. I felt like it would have been more dramatic if we actually saw her dead body and he was just lying over the body and he was just telling us his thoughts of what he's done. But I felt like throughout this novel you're seeing him progress more and more into the character that he is in the original Hunger Games book. He's becoming um, less innocent. He's murdering. He's um, lying, he's being manipulative. Um, I like that transgression of his character throughout the whole series. And yeah, as a whole, I actually really enjoyed the book. I think the storyline was interesting. I think the characters were interesting. I know that some books, when they do spin offs of an actual series, they flop. But I don't think this book has flopped. It takes us straight back into the Hunger Games world. And it was actually really well done. And even though it's quite a thick book, I feel like all of it was worth reading. It did a lot of world building. And it sort of... It wouldn't have been the same to have just had more so of the games bit. So overall, I'm probably going to give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And any Hunger Games fan would love this book. I would really love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you share the same opinion? And if you're interested in more book reviews or writing related videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.